neon shelves. That's one PI. That's a USB charger. It's another cable. Another PI. And a switch. We have some uh, memory cards. We are going to build a Raspberry Pi cluster. Now that we have our little Raspberry Pi stack fully built, it now contains three Raspberry Pi's. So I have another one lying around that I need to add to it. It has power over USB, it has network. So what's next? Well, it, of course it needs an operating system to run stuff on, right? And um, there is a project that I follow its period, but first, my goal for this build is to run Kubernetes on it. And there is a Kubernetes on ARM project, and it basically supports two operating systems, the Arc Linux uh, version, and for that you need different versions for different types of um, uh, Raspberry Pi's and there's the Hypriot OS, Hypriot, I don't know how you pronounce it, Hypriot OS, um, which I already follow uh, and it, it has really cool slogan Docker Pirates armed with explosive stuff, which I really like. Um, and basically the upside of it is that it already has all the Docker stuff on it, right? So, and if we then look at the instructions for uh, Kubernetes on ARM, it goes into a long list of commands that you need to run, uh, set up your board from an uh, uh, SD card, blah, blah, start Kubernetes. But it also has the ability to just um, install based on a package that it already created when you already have an operating system. So I'm going to choose this one uh, because what I want to do is just burn an image, the Hypriot uh, OS image onto SD cards, put them in the machine and then um, from there just install the needed software. So I don't want to go through all these, these very um, kind of yeah, it's not difficult, but it's error prone uh, because uh, it starts, well, you should write uh, with these uh, shell commands and then you need to know what drive it is, etc., etc. Um, the people at 
uh, Racing.io created a very cool tool. It is used to burn disk images onto SD cards. Uh, they have this entire uh, uh, Internet of Things thing. Uh, and there you need to run on SD cards a lot. So they created a cool tool. Uh, so we're going to skip all this and just uh, take our SD cards and then burn uh, the images. So um, for a Hyperion, uh, all I did was go to downloads, take version, uh, the latest version, download the image, which I put on a very good location. Boop, there we go. So I extracted the image, it's about one gigs. So the new Raspberry Pi's will work with these, what are they called? Micro SDHC uh, cards. So let's select an image, build fun things, projects, Raspberry Pi cluster. There we go. We put it on this uh, dev disk. You needed to look that up in case you do not use this method. This tool is cross-platform, so highly recommended. Test the eight gigs, beautiful, flash it. You need to um, input your credentials because you're doing something on disk level. All right, so now it's flashed and um, it already unmounted it. So that's very good. So we take the image out and put the other one in and we do it again we use the same image there we go flash it so again it's finished so you do this for all the cards that you need uh, i'm looking for another one that i'm supposed to have so um, i will do that later so add it to the raspberry pi and then we turn them on so now we're supposed to find them on our network and that can be a little bit tricky so if we scan the network um, uh, for any machine uh, the Hyperiot image will automatically uh, by default send out the uh, uh, hostname Black Pearl. So if we scan for that, we now see that there's two machines onto the network that are uh, Black Pearl. So let's open up a new uh, terminal. Hello, where's the new terminal? There we go. Um, SSH Pirate. And the, uh, trust that machine. Hype Riot. And there we go. We're in. They uh, are alive. One is um, top, one is bottom, because um, we have two at the moment. Um, but they're both called uh, Black Pearl uh, at the moment. Uh, even though I love the pirate names, we need to have distinct names. And uh, for our Raspberry Pi cluster, it would be good to have one Raspberry Pi 1, Raspberry Pi 2, uh, etc. Maybe even master and um, uh, one two three four um but for now let's um give it the name raspberry pi one and raspberry pi two um i believe this is the bottom one so we go into a boot and there is this device in it so sudo vi device in it yaml and here we can say uh, we want to have a name RPI minus one. And uh, we should do a sudo reboot for that. And then on the other side, we shall do the same thing. Uh, boot, boot device in it. And we shall call this number two. All right, and do a sudo reboot. Yeah, so there's two of them. So now we can just say um, SSH RPI 2.fritz.box. Uh, Fritz box is my uh, local um, uh, 
router, which does all the DNS handling and stuff like that. Um, well, there's no need to be pirates. Uh, and one of the features it has, it will uh, automatically uh, create a DNS entry for uh, your machine when it boots up, which is really convenient, but well, you need to have a unique name. So that's the fun part. Right, package deployment. Um, what does it do? Right. So on both nodes, um, in a larger installation, you would just uh, have some form of configuration management, uh, I guess. Uh, but for now, we will do this. And then we do the sudo dpackage install. Again, we do it on both nodes. And on both nodes, it should just succeed because Hyperiod already has all the Docker dependencies, stuff like that. Um, set up the environment, it will ask which board it's running on, uh, which OS. A reboot is required for it to function properly. Okay. So let's see what that does. Please run S word. All right. Um, I will increase the font because I realized that uh, we should run it as root. Uh, which board? Uh, we are on a RPI tree that is simple for now. Which OS? We have Hyperiot OS. Um, so I guess we should do the same right here. Uh, sudo cube config install. Right? Uh, we have an RPI tree and a Hyperiot OS. What hostname do you want? Well, this is RPI one, so we do RPI minus one. Which time zone? Europe, uh, Amsterdam. Defaults to overlay, that's, that's fine. Uh, do you want to create a one gigabyte swap file required for compiling? No, it's default. It says required for compiling. Will it compile? Well, let's first try no, see what happens. Um, do you want to reboot now? A reboot is required for Docker to function. Well, yes. Okay. Uh, so on this side, we will say RPI2. All right. So following instructions. Uh, start the master or worker. Um, let's make the one the master. And then we do the worker on the second one. So here we will do enable master i'm thinking uh, it should run as sudo all right so there's a lot of version information network set to 10.1 so the master consists out of multiple components it has some etsy uh, etcd for key value storage and stuff like that so it will start building that up in uh, now my lower uh, Raspberry Pi. So that will become the master with all the dependencies. Flannel uh, is being installed and that is a layer that uh, provides networking in a transparent manner. All right, so that finished. So it says it may take about a minute before the API server is up. So the um, Build machine is running. Um, if we do Docker PS, it shows that the Hypercube ARM is running. This is the master, so it has a lot of things on it. Uh, DF min H shows that space, we still have five gigs, so that's plenty. Um, top shows that uh, we have 12 megabytes free. <laughs> So it is quite uh, quite hefty on um, on memory, but well, it's a, it's a full cloud basically. So let's see how that uh, stacks up. Uh, on the other side, we uh, are supposed to create a worker, which talks to that master. The master is up and running. So let's see if this works. Using master IP, master was not found. Uh, so we should. Network is 192. Um, 
168.178.32. That's the master. Let's see if we can get a more congruent. All right, so what do we see? Yes. Woohoo! You might think, why is he so enthusiastic? Because the spinning wheel means that there is something that is alive. Beautiful! We're waiting for the worker to finish so that we can start deploying uh, containers. So it is done with its work. Let's add something to it. So if we um, take the instructions, let the fun begin. Well, we had cube control rule. Cube, cube, cube cuddle, as they call it, which is a tool that uh, you can use to uh, talk to your Kubernetes uh, cluster. But for now, I just want to see it work. Um, so what I will do is I will run some ng ings instances. So why not? So the cube cuddle will uh, tell Kubernetes, hey, schedule for me these instances and create them on your cluster, on your uh, on the thing that you have. So what I think should happen is that on my RPI worker, which is here, <laughs> it should um, uh, start containers for these things. So yeah, now we see. The ngx test, does it also do stuff here? There's also ngx here, so it might um, already be doing things. If we refresh the interface. Right. Look at that. So we have containers deployed on a Raspberry Pi cluster. And we can actually do stuff with it. So how wonderful is that? Uh, here's the cube system. So the, the instances that are needed to run uh, the entire system. So we have the cube DNS, the dashboard, uh, master proxy add-on manager, the DNS and the dashboard itself. So, and these are part of a replication controller. So we have one out of one port. Beautiful. 